these irregularities, especially with the admission of the AFP that they were the one who spent for the 15 million Youth Leadership Summit and not the Department of Education. Major General Nolasco A. Mempin. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Your Honor. You are the former Undersecretary for Administration of the Department of Education. That was during the stint of former Secretary, Vice President Sara Duterte. Do you confirm? Major General... Uh, Major General... Uh, former Major General uh, Nolasco. Nolasco, you're recognized Mempin. by the Chair. Your, uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Your, Chair? Please answer the question of Congresswoman Luis Tere. Yes, Your Honor. So you confirm having been appointed as Undersecretary for Administration of DepEd. That was during the time of former Secretary Vice President Sara Duterte. Let us go back to your career in the AFP, General Mempin. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Back in 2017, nasan po ba kayo, General Mempin? Uh, in 2017, ma'am, initially I was assigned in uh, 10th Infantry Division as uh, the Chief of the Governance and Strategy Man Management Office uh, effective January 2017, then by August of the uh, same year, I was uh, designated as the commander of uh, Task Force Dabao in Dabao City, uh, Mr. Chair. So the first appointment in 2017 was at the 10th Infantry Division. Correct, uh, Your Honor. Pag sinabi po ba natin, General Mempin, 10th Infantry Division, what areas are covered? The 10th Infantry uh, Aguila Division covers the uh, whole of uh, Region 11 and part of uh, Region 12, part of uh, Region 10, and uh, part of uh, Region 13, Caraga, uh, Your Honor. And can you please cite some of the big provinces which are under these regions, General Mempin? Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Your Honor, uh, for Region 11, it covers uh, Dabao City, uh, Dabao uh, del Norte, Dabao del Sur, Dabao Occidental, uh, and uh, Dabao Oriental. It also includes uh, parts of uh, Bukidnon, but uh, greater part of Bukidnon is under uh, Port Infantry Division, and part of uh, uh, North Cotabato, ma'am. And for Region 12, General Mempin? Region 12 is a uh, part of uh, Cotabato, ma'am. And Region 13? Region 13 is part of uh, Agusan uh, Sur and a part of uh, Surigao del Sur, ma'am. Can you please be specific about the inclusive period when you were the commander of the 10th Infantry Division, which covers... Regions 11, 12, and 13. I was uh, designated as uh, commander of the uh, 10th Infantry Division in uh, February of uh, 2022 until uh, my retirement in uh, January 28, uh, 2023, ma'am. Uh, Your Honor. And Earlier, you mentioned about 2017. And you were likewise at the 10th Infantry Division. What specific assignment do you have during that time? Uh, from 2017, ma'am, uh, uh, I was assigned as the commander of Task Force uh, Dabao uh, in charge of uh, covering, uh, actually it only covers uh, the downtown Dabao, uh, in charge of uh, the anti-terrorism uh, unit of the armed forces because of the uh, series of bombing because uh, Task Force Dabao was established in 2003. 
Then after that, in 2019, I was, uh, after my stint uh, at the task force Dabao, I was designated as the commander of the uh, uh, 10 authored infantry brigade covering uh, uh, parts of uh, Dabao region, Dabao del no specifically Dabao del Norte, uh, parts of uh, Dabao Oriental, parts of the the northern or the mountainous area of Davao City, and then uh, some parts of uh, Pukidnon and some parts of uh, North Cotabato, ma'am. So would it be correct to say 2017, General Mempin, you were heading the task force Davao, primarily in charge with Davao City and the major parts of the Davao region. Do you confirm that? Uh, Ma'am, for clarification, uh, Mr. Chair, during my stint as Task Force Dabao, it only covers uh, the downtown because uh, Dabao City is divided into three areas. The, uh, it has uh, the downtown, midtown, and the uptown. The midtown is the, the downtown is the uh, central district. Then uh, midtown and uh, up, uh, uptown are those areas. Uh, so which part are you in charge with? For uh, 2017, ma'am, uh, 2017 until uh, midtown? 2019 in... Uh, uptown or downtown? Downtown, downtown during task You force. are in charge of downtown in 2017 until as the head of task, task force, force Davao. Correct, ma'am. Yeah, and then uh, sometime in 2019... You became in charge of the 10th Infantry Brigade covering most parts of the Davao region. Na chat, ma'am. Uh, uh, 2019, I was designated as the Brigade Commander. Uh, brigade Commander is under the 10th Infantry Division still, uh, covering uh, Dabao, some parts of Davao region, specifically Davao del Norte, Dabao Oriental and uh, uh, not Dabao Oriental, Dabao del Norte. Yes, General, part of you City. have stated that yes, already. And then for 2022, this is the time that you were in charge of the 10th Infantry Division covering the regions 11, 12, and 13. That's correct, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. And of course, I just wish to manifest that during this time, 2017 to 2022, the president was former President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Uh, yes, that's correct, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. And for the Vow City, the mayor during that time was our Vice President, Sara Duterte. That's correct, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. And considering that you are taking care of the regions, the provinces, and the city, which are considered the hometown of the president. May I know, was there any marching order coming from the president, having assigned to those places? None, actually, because uh, as member of the armed forces, our main objective is to ensure, uh, to protect the people and uh, secure the uh, uh, territory for, uh, for our sovereignty. So. Uh, basically, for the Army or the 10th Infantry Agra Division, our uh, focus is on uh, insurgency uh, problem. While in Dabao City, during my stint as Task Force Dabao Commander, is for the extreme uh, terrorism, like bombing of the uh, extreme With all due uh, respect, uh, General Mempin, I hope you will be responsive to the question. Because the vow, of course, is the place of the former president. So this representation is interested whether in your assignment in 2017, 2019, and 2022, all pertaining to the vow region. Mayroon po bang specific na marching order ang presidente, considering that these places are his home places? Uh, I have not uh, received any specific instructions, but... Uh, as, thank you, General uh, Mempin. I think you have answered the question already. Th thank you, Your How Mr. about Chair. any marching order from the Vice President during your stint as Task Force Davao Head? 
uh, the only instruction that I received during our uh, assumption or during my assumption as uh, Task Force Dabao Commander is to have zero bombing incident because he said if there's a bombing incident in Dabao City, then you build your uh, mission as uh, Commander of Task Force Dabao. So zero bombing, that's the specific instructions of former uh, Mayor uh, Sara Duterte. You I wish to remind you of the article which was published in Sunstar. Ang sabi po ng ating Vice Presidente noon ay City Mayor. Kayo po ang head ng Task Force Dabao. Don't sleep. Don't breathe. Don't embarrass me. Do you confirm that? Uh, that's correct. I still have the newspaper on that, ma'am. Now, please enlighten us. Walk us through. During the time that you were assigned in Davao City and the rest of the other areas of Davao region, how will you describe the peace and order situation in Davao? In uh, Davao City, ma'am, actually, when my... When I first arrived, because I was uh, also assigned in uh, Dabao region for a short stint in 2008, uh, the first thing that I noticed in uh, Dabao... With all due respect, Mr. Chair, let us remind our resource speaker to be responsive to the question. We are asking General Mempin about the status of the Bao with respect to the peace and order situation during your time as the head of Task Force Davao, I think that is 2017 until 2019. Uh, for uh, the Davao, downtown Davao, ma'am, oh, it is uh, very peaceful, but uh, still the threat of uh, terrorism is there, so the existence of Task Force Davao is still... In the scale needed. of 1 to 10, 1 being the lowest and 10 being the highest, how peaceful is Davao? Uh, Ten, ma'am, because up to now, no Ten. incident of terrorism. So that confirms the description of Colonel Garma in one of our hearings that the Vow is one of the most livable city in the Philippines. You agree with that? Uh, yes, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. And of course, you're one of the reasons why you are able to maintain or you were able to maintain such level of peace and order in the Vow City because you were the one in charge, the partner of the LGU. May we ask General Mempin, ano po ba ang mga programang ginawa ninyo sa Davao City to be able to achieve the level 10, the highest score in terms of peace and order that you just gave to Davao City? To be candid about it, ma'am. Actually, we, I just uh, continue uh, what my uh, predecessors have done because when I assume in 2017... General Mempin, kindly focus on the programs. Ano po yung programs na inyong in-implement? Uh, number one, ma'am, is uh, continued uh, collaboration with uh, various stakeholders, particularly with the uh, Muslim uh, communities in Davao City to ensure that there will no slippage of uh, probable or would be uh, bombing incident in Davao City, ma'am. Any other programs, General Mempin? Of course, uh, continue uh, information uh, awareness to all the uh, residents or not only residents but uh, people visiting Davao because right now, we, we the, the term right now is culture of security where uh, security is everybody's concern and not only of the uh, security units like the AAP and the uh, Philippine National Police, ma'am. I assume, General Mempin, that you were able to implement a lot of programs for you to be able to achieve that level 10 peace and order situation. So aside from the collaboration with Muslim communities and the information awareness dissemination, can you please cite more programs which you recall were very significant in your achievement of the level 10 peace and order in Davao City? Uh, yes, ma'am. Number one is uh, uh, collaboration, information awareness, then uh, continued uh, uh, meetings with uh, or uh, exchange of uh, information with uh, intelligence uh, 
uh, units or uh, security units in the bow. Uh, continued uh, collaboration with the business business sector because uh, they are uh, the one uh, who needs to be convinced that the bow is safe for the investment to stay in the bow or in increase uh, of it. Then, uh, of course, uh, you continued uh, presence because uh, actually the world uh, do not sleep. We continue patrols in the Bau City, mobile, fixed checkpoint, in the Bau Airport, and even uh, business establishment uh, when there are major uh, engagement, task force the Bau is uh, always present. And of course, uh, uh, we continue to uh, uh, make our personnel uh, professional because uh, what whatever programs uh, you have, if the people, uh, if, meaning our soldiers is not uh, uh, professional in handling, like for example, we always conduct uh, checkpoint operations and uh, we always ask uh, uh, indulgence of the uh, inconvenience that we have uh, cost to the uh, uh, passenger and into the drivers entering uh, Dabao City. So that's all uh, part of our uh, programs to ensure that uh, everybody is uh, cooperating to ensure that no bombing incident will occur in Dabao City. I wish to make a recap of what you said, General Mempin. You mentioned collaboration with Muslim communities information awareness and dissemination to all residents meetings with other intelligence units collaboration with business and other sectors presence of patrols and presence with all other professionals to make sure that no bombing incident will happen in the vow city you confirm that that's correct uh, your honor and these are the reasons why you were able to achieve the level 10 the highest score for the peace and order situation in the Vau City. You confirm? I yes, uh, you honor, Mr. Chair. And I must say, Mr. Chair, General Mempin, na ito rin ang dahilan why I wish to conclude pinagtiwalaan ka ng noon ay City Mayor and now our Vice President, Sara Duterte. Yes, uh, Your Honor. Level 10 score is something that I am sure you will be able to gain the trust and confidence of whoever is the local chief executive of the area to which you are assigned. You agree with me? Yes, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Let's Chief. move forward, General Mempin. Kailan po kayo nag-retire sa I, AFP? I retired last uh, January 28, 2023, Your January Honor. January 28, 2023. And I understand you entered the Department of Education during the time of VP Sara Duterte. You confirm that? That's correct, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Can Chair. you please enlighten us? Ano pong appointment ang nabigay sa inyo during your time in DepEd? Uh, first, ma'am, I was uh, uh, appointed as uh, or recruited as uh, consultant of uh, Department of Education from April. Can you please expound? Consultant on what matter? Uh, I was uh, a highly techni technical consultant uh, because I came from the armed forces and uh, uh, our uh, former secretary and uh, vice president uh, consider me as an asset in uh, uh, collaboration or engaging the uh, security sector. And you believe, General Mempin, that it was your career in the AFP, which was considered by then Secretary of DepEd, why you were hired as the highly technical consultant. That's correct, uh, Your Honor. If you can still recall, General Mempin, ano po ba ang trabaho ng isang highly technical consultant as you were made to understand during your, that stint in the Department of Education? Uh, when you uh, become a highly consultant, meaning the uh, unit or the agency could not have it on its own uh, personnel. That's why they could uh, uh, engage or hire the services of a uh, consultant, ma'am. 
For the information of the Filipino people, General Mempin, please allow me to share the functions which were under your position as highly technical consultant. One, provide high-level policy advice on topics agenda that are confidential in nature. Two, provide guidance, technical oversight, and expert advice to DepEd in the development of various programs in all levels of governance on safety and security. Three, engage and collaborate with other departments and security-related services. Four, submit monthly status to OSEC. And five, perform other duties related thereto. Would you agree with me, General Memphin, that as highly technical consultant, your mandate is to make sure that the need to promote and ensure safety and security is well addressed. That's uh, correct, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. You confirm that? Yes. And having confirmed that, tama po bang isipin, you are the one in charge also of the confidential funds of the Department of Education? Uh, that's not uh, correct, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. Then, General Memphin, if you are not the one in charge of this confidential fund, then who is or who was? I was not uh, aware of because uh, I only more on, because after uh, April, May, uh, when uh, USEC for administration is open. Uh, I was uh, again asked if uh, I could, but uh, I'm not part of the utilization or how the confidential part. But is you used. agree with me, General Memphin, lahat ng trabaho na ibinigay sa inyo, hindi nyo ito kayang isagawa without the necessary funding. And the funding that is allowed for these purposes is, of course, the confidential fund. Do you agree with me? Uh, that's correct, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair, but uh, I have not uh, received any instructions and also uh, funds, for that matter, on uh, in the performance or in the uh, accomplishment of uh, task given or mandate to me as the uh, consultant, uh, Your in Honor. In other words, Mr. General Memphin, while your job description as highly technical consultant pertains to safety and security, you have no access to confidential fund and you did not give any instruction from the head of the agency. That is your statement. Do you confirm that? Uh, yes, uh, Your Honor. I am, I am not uh, part of uh, Thank the you. utilization. Let us move forward, General Memphin. Kanina may na mention po kayo. After some time, you were appointed as the USEC for administration. Did you apply for this position? Uh, no, ma'am. I was uh, recruited by the former secretary and vice president. Oh. Balikan ko po yung highly technical consultant. Of course, you expressed your desire because a notice of award was given to you to be the highly technical consultant. Aside from you, General Memphin, Meron pa po bang iba na nag-express ng desire to be engaged as the highly technical consultant? Uh, I'm not uh, particularly aware of uh, other consultant that express their willingness, but uh, I do believe there are uh, other uh, consultant that uh, the Office of the Secretary has uh, tapped. I understand. How about with respect to your appointment as USEC for administration? You said you were chosen. You confirmed that? Uh, I was uh, recruited, yes, ma'am. You were recruited. Who recruited you to become the undersecretary for administration? The former secretary and vice president, uh, Sarah, your honor, Mr. Chair. And would you know why? Bakit ikaw ang napusuan? nabigyan at pagkalooban nitong pagiging 
Undersecretary for Administration ng Department of Education. As to the uh, reason, the actual reason behind it, I was not aware, but uh, I can surmise the trust and confidence that uh, she has on me. That uh, is maybe correct. Maybe the, the reason, ma'am. The trust and confidence that you were able to establish as head of Task Force Davao in 2017 and being the, the one in charge of the 10th Infantry Division in Regions 11, 12, and 13 were very significant, not only in your engagement as highly technical consultant, but in your appointment as well as Undersecretary for Administration of DepEd. We agree on that, General Memvin. Yes, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. As a matter of fact, to illustrate how the former secretary trusted you, may I ask, are you aware of Department Order Number 78, General Mempin? Yes, ma'am. What is Department Order Number 78? It's about uh, the uh, procurement, ma'am. With all due respect, Dito po sa Department Number 78, ibinibigay po ang mandato na pamunuan ang Department Computerization Program hmm? sa Program Director. You confirm this? Yes, I stand corrected. Ma so about, In other uh, words, since 2010, General Memphine, ang, com ang Department Computerization Program ay pinamumunuan ng program director. Ito po ang nakasaad sa Department Order Number 78. But because the former secretary trusted you so much on this position of being the Undersecretary for Administration, the DepEd issued DO Number 16, Series of 2023. Would you like to enlighten us kung ano po itong DO 16, Series of 2023? Uh, actually, it's the revision of uh, the Department of Order, order uh, 78, ma'am, Series 2020-2010. Uh, it's uh, actually revising uh, the compositions of uh, the those for the procurement. To be specific, of, General Memphis, with all due respect, ano ho ang pinaka-significant na naging pagbabago? in terms of the DepEd computerization program from DO78 to DO16? It's not only the uh, director who decides for the uh, computer, uh, procurement of uh, department computerization program. For the information of the committee, General Memphine, it is clear that from DO number 16, the management of the department's computerization program was transferred from the program director to the undersecretary for administration, and that is you, General Memphine. That is how the former secretary trusted you, a policy which has long been existing for 13 long years, 2010, was suddenly changed transferring the management of DepEd computerization program from the program director to the office of the undersecretary for administration. Do you agree with me? Uh, yes, ma'am. Ma can I uh, elaborate, Mr. Chair? Yes, please. Uh, please continue. Actually, b before uh, the computerization program is, uh, because actually we notice uh, uh, some issues in the DCP, pro DCP procurement, particularly in terms of uh, the members. So, because uh, there's a huge amount of money involved in the DepEd computerization program, so it was agreed through the executive uh, uh, committee uh, as a collegial body to elevate the authority of uh, deciding the DepEd computerization program from program director to, uh, but uh, basically the program director is uh, actively involved in the 
uh, decision making. I understand, making. General Mempi. Now let us go to the DepEd computerization program. Per fiscal year 2023, mayroon po kayong report. Ang sabi nyo, the delay and underperformance in procuring the ICT packages for 2023 were mainly due to the reconfiguration of the original specification and modifications of the package contents. You agree with this? Uh, yes. yes. Uh, because this is in your report. But I wish to ask General Mempin, how come in your physical target versus accomplishment, kindly show on the screen, ito pong fiscal year 2023, this is your time as the one heading the DepEd computerization program simultaneous with you being the Undersecretary for Administration. Zero percent po ang accomplishment ng DepEd computerization program. Can you please enlighten us on this? Actually, <clears throat> Uh, actually, ma'am, uh, nandito po yung uh, director ng uh, ICTS, but uh, to, to give you insight on uh, the performance, because ma'am, uh, when we arrived in DepEd 2023, actually, it's still the 2022 uh, DCP programs uh, being processed because of the delay during the 2022 because of the change of uh, the uh, administration. So actually, ma'am, uh, late uh, uh, 2023 na po na process completely yung... May we know uh, why, DCP. General Memphin? Of course, we understand from the records na yung 2023 budget hindi nyo po na utilize and that is the reason kung bakit naka 0% ang accomplishment rate. May we know the reason why? Uh, because of uh, the partly of uh, the procurement process because uh, it has to go to the uh, bids and awards committee and uh, the members of the bids and awards committee is uh, still uh, pull, uh, hands in pull in terms of the uh, DCP But of course 2020. you realize, General Memphin, the value of this DepEd computerization program with respect to the learning of the students who are supposedly relying on this. Tama po ba? That's uh, correct, Your Honor, Mr. And Chair. to complete the picture, General Memphin, I wish to share to the committee, mayroon po kayong na-procure 44,638 ICT packages and DepEd packages sa taong 2022 and 2023. Ngunit ayon sa annual audit report ng COA, ang na-deliver nyo lang is 16,580. This is not even one half of what is supposed to be delivered. So to make it clear, General Memphin, nakapag-procure po kayo ng 44,638 ICT packages, but per report of COA, Ang delivered palang is 16,580, equivalent to 37% of the supposed accomplishment. Can you please explain this? Uh, Ma'am, uh, Your Honor, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, if I uh, may uh, request the uh, uh, director of uh, ICTS because uh, uh, I, I was not already out of. Uh, uh, DepEd since uh, July, so I'm not aware of the updates in terms of uh, deliveries with regards so that uh, maybe General we Memphis, could have with a all good due picture. respect, the procurement happened in 2023. Yes, ma'am. Ibig sabihin, nabili na po ito. 44,638 ICT packages. You were still with DepEd. Yes, ma'am. But uh, only last July 2024. Tama yes, po ba? From your perspective as Undersecretary for Administration and the one heading the DepEd computerization program, 
ano po ba naging appreciation nyo dito? Anong naging dahilan? Why you were way below the supposed accomplishment when in fact, ang dami nyo naman palang nabili. Or, if I may rephrase the question, nasan po yung nawawalang ICT packages? Uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair, uh, uh, po, during the 2023, uh, only the DCP 2022 was processed, uh, procured, and only started uh, delivering in late uh, 2023. And uh, actually, only in, the first in three... In both dates that you mentioned, General Memphin, you're very much connected still with the Department of Education. Yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, so I'm explaining that uh, during the 2023, ma'am, the DCP 2022 is uh, uh, prioritized, so it's only being uh, deliberated or processed in the procurement. And late of uh, October, that's only... There are only, or there were only three lots of DCP which were uh, successfully bidded out, and the uh, was Fien, processed in twenty. If I may interrupt, let's simplify the question. The forty-four thousand six hundred thirty-eight ICT packages were procured during that time. Only sixteen thousand were delivered. Nasan po yung iba? Mama. Because you, the 13, the three lots supposedly delivered during December and early January of uh, 2024 uh, were uh, subject to uh, request for extension of some of the supplier, which we were not uh, Mr. Chair, convinced. I lament that General Mampin cannot, could not give a clear and complete account of this 44,638. And I still have a lot of questions to raise. So may I just uh, request General Mampin to please submit a written accounting of this 44,638 ICT packages with respect to their current whereabouts. Simply lang po ang question, General Mampin. Nasaan yung 44,000 minus 16,000 na ICT packages? Moving forward, Mr. Chair. General Mamfin, I wish to raise questions about the DepEd confidential funds. There is such an AOM number 2024-15. This is dated February 1, 2024. Out of the 150 million confidential funds that were given to DepEd, only three quarters were utilized. That is equivalent to 112.5 million. Are you aware of this, General Memphin? Uh, I just made aware during the uh, hearing about the uh, confidential fund because I was not uh, directly involved in the... Okay, but at least you can confirm that in the Journals Appropriation Act of 2023, DepEd has 150 million budget for confidential fund. You're aware of that? Uh, yes, ma'am, as member of the Exico. And out of 150 million budget for confidential fund, only the first, the second, and the third quarter were utilized. That is equivalent to 112.5 million confidential fund. You're aware of that? I, must, uh, I was made aware of that, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. And sometime in February 2024, nag-issue po si COA ng Audit Observation Memo. Ang sabi po dito, there is such a 75 million no, uh, disallowance na na-justify po nila later on and out of this 75 million, however, mayroong 15.54 million pertaining to rewards to informers na hindi pa rin po na clear because of lack of the necessary supporting documents. Can you please enlighten us on this? Uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair, I was not uh, part of uh, how... Uh, the confidential fund is uh, being uh, utilized, so I was not uh, aware of uh, 
the uh, uh, discrepancy, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. I understand. Nevertheless, General Memphis, having spent a long years of career in the military, of course, you are aware about what confidential fund is. Yes, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. Can you please enlighten us? What do you understand about confidential fund? Uh, confidential funds are uh, funds uh, allocated uh, for the uh, certain uh, uh, units or organizations for uh, for its uh, security, uh, maybe, and uh, other in the furtherance of uh, of its mandate, particularly those who cannot be. Uh, uh, gathered through uh, the regular means of uh, acquiring, for example, information. And how will you differentiate confidential fund from intelligence fund? Uh, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair, in my uh, opinion, uh, intelligence fund are uh, specifically uh, have uh, uh, program being, uh, although it's, it's not being elaborated, but uh, it has go to the programs of uh, organization, for example, the uh, law enforcement unit, the armed forces, and even the uh, LGUs. While confidential plan has more on uh, flexibility, but uh, as uh, we discussed, there is certain uh, protocol uh, SOPs being followed under the uh, JMC 2015-01, uh, ma'am. To recap what you said, General Memphis, and please agree with me if I am correct, no? Both have a purpose of addressing the safety and security of the nation. Tama po ba? Yes, uh, you're However, right. confidential fund is given to civilian offices. Tama? Uh, yes, Your Honor. While intelligence fund is given to military offices, tama po ba? Uh, military and uh, other law enforcement uh, yes. units, ma'am. In other words, they have the same purpose, confidential and intelligence fund. That is to take care of the national safety and security. However, magkaibang opisina ang gumagamit. Kapag confidential fund, it is given to civilian offices at kapag intelligence fund, military, and like what you said, law enforcement offices. Tama, General Membin? Yes, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. But we have to share also that under Republic Act 7160, the local government code, the LGUs are given confidential fund as well. They're authorized to have and utilize confidential fund. You must be aware of this because for the longest period of time, Nandun po kayo sa Davao, and I understand like any other LGUs, nag-utilize din sila ng kanilang confidential fund. You agree with me? Uh, I don't have the uh, exact uh, information, but uh, I do believe they have, uh, they are, do, they are uh, using confidential funds in uh, a part of their, uh, uh, mandate uh, in respective uh, LGUs, ma'am. Remind lang po natin, Mr. Chair, because this was flashed already in the previous hearings. Ito po yung, should I say, escalation of confidential fund of the city of Davao starting from 2016, 144 million. 2017, you were already the head of the task force Davao, 294 million. And then 2010, nandun na po kayo sa 10th Infantry Division. They have 420 million confidential fund in the Vow City. And then 20, no, that's 2018. And then 2019 to 2022, consistent na 460 million confidential fund. Napakalaki po nito, General Memphis. Puntahan ko po yung 2017, 294 million. You were the head of Task Force Davao. Pwede po bang malaman 
how you appreciate the utilization of the 294 million confidential fund? Uh, again, ma'am, uh, in my uh, to be candid about it, Mr. Uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair, uh, I was not uh, aware of uh, how the confidential fund is being uh, utilized or implemented. But uh, I am wa just wanted to report to the body that uh, the uh, LGU of the BAO, even uh, before and after my term, is uh, being supported in terms of uh, logistics, meaning uh, uh, our uh, vehicles, the maintenance of uh, vehicles uh, are uh, coming from the uh, LGU. And uh, if there are major activities like uh, uh, gathering, like Kadayawan, Aron ng Dabao, all the uh, security elements uh, involved in the securing uh, Dabao City and its uh, major events, uh, the LGU is uh, providing support in terms of uh, meals and uh, uh, logistics, meaning fuel uh, to our uh, uh, vehicles, ma'am. In other words, General Memphis, all the activities that you raised earlier, collaboration with the Muslim communities, information dissemination, meetings with other intelligence units, collaboration with different sectors, presence of patrols, and coordination with other professionals. These are the activities which were supported by that 294 million in 2017. Uh, I have no idea, but because uh, aside from Task Force Dabao, there are also members of the uh, Joint Task but Force at least, at least those activities were part of the expenditures of the 294 million in 2017. Do you agree? I, uh, I believe so, ma'am, but uh, I'm not 100% uh, sure. Thank you. Now let us go to AOM 2024-15. Ito po yung na-mention ko kanina, General Memphin, na merong disallowance na 75 million. Out of 75 million, the basis of the disallowance of 15.54 million is the lack of supporting documents for payment of rewards. Reward to informers. And in response to the AOM, nakatanggap po ang COA ng certification galing sa apat na AFP officers. One is Colonel Moran Singh, Two is Lieutenant Colonel Sangdaan. Three is Colonel Panopio. And four is Major General Pahaw. Mayroon pong pinapa-explain ang COA na 15 million. This is about payment of reward to informers. And then in response, nag-submit po ang DepEd ng apat na certification. General Memphin, can you please enlighten us? What are these certifications all about? <clears throat> Your Honor, Mr. Chair, uh, the uh, certification that uh, I was asked to uh, coordinate with uh, commanders on uh, in the area with regards to the uh, conduct of the Youth Leadership Summit are uh, present here. And... Uh, uh, I was just asked to get the feedback from uh, these uh, units of the army in particular of uh, how they uh, conduct uh, the youth leadership summit in their respective area and how effective it in uh, uh, securing or uh, this ensuring that uh, this uh, student out of school youth and even uh, uh, indigenous peoples, uh, youth of, of indigenous peoples are uh, protected no? because what, that's one of the trust of also of uh, Department of Education that our youth be able to be a uh, productive citizens of our country. Thank you. Now let us go to Colonel Buran Singh. Colonel Buran Singh, there is a certification here. 
Signed by you, I suppose. This is dated January 1, 2024. You are certifying about the eight activities for the Youth Leadership Summit with 531 participants, as well as information education campaign with 53 activities and 9,428 participants. Do you confirm this? Colonel Boransing, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I confirm that, uh, Mr. Chair. I observe that the certification is addressed to to whom it may concern. And then at the end of the body, it says, for the commander. Kanino ho ba talaga naka-address itong certification na ito, Colonel? Uh... If I may, Mr. Chair, I'd like to explain about the certification. Please continue, yes. Mr. Um, Colonel this, Burundi. Uh, our job, uh, the First Infantry Division covers the whole of Sambuanga Peninsula and both Lanao provinces. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, Chair, with all due respect, Colonel, yes, uh, I, was, I, uh, I have I, a limited time, so kindly give a responsive answer to the questions that are being raised. Ang tanong ko po, Colonel, kanino ho ba naka-address itong certification? Sa taas po, to whom it may concern, sa baba, for the commander. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, this uh, was asked by the DepEd, and this is our standard format. For may we all... know who in particular in DepEd asked for this certification? Um, Yusek Mempin. Yusek Mempin. Yes, Mr. Chair. And the... The, that is the standard certification because because of our multi-stakeholder activities on the ground, a lot of other agencies ask for certifications. Like for instance, during the Youth Leadership Summits, we get a lot of lectures from other agencies and they ask certifications. So this is our standard uh, certifications uh, we issued to all agencies uh, who ask for it. So, Colonel, you mentioned about the Youth Leadership Summit. Yes, Can you Mr. please... Chair. Name some of your, your resource speakers during this time. <clears throat> yes, uh, Mr. Ch uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, first of all, we have uh, uh, on criminality, we have uh, resource persons from the Philippine National Police. Can you please name names? Yes, uh, the, we usually have the chief of police of the municipality. Uh, of, please uh, be specific, Colonel. Okay, ma'am. So, uh, the ones that conducted the Youth Leadership Summit, ma'am, are our line units, infantry battalions under us. So Kindly we have, give names, please. Yes, uh, the Chief of Police. For example, Mr. Chair, uh, if I may, the Youth Leadership Summit, uh, August 7 to 9, August 2023, conducted in Barangay Poblacion, Madaya, Maging Lanao del Sur. Uh, Mr. Chair, there are eight Youth Leadership Summit, so at the very least, I'm expecting eight names uh, who were the resource speakers during that time. Yes, ma'am, if I may continue to read it, ma'am, it's uh, in the report. Kindly limit the answer, Please Colonel, continue, to Colonel. Uh, so Boran we have... Uh, we have the Municipal Mayor of Masio, uh, Lano del Sur. We have... Uh, also, do you have the date also? Can you please cite the date also? Oh, yes, ma'am. Uh, as I really date said, date of YLS and then the resource speaker. Yes, ma'am. As I already said, this one is uh, August 7 to 9, 2023. The venue was uh, in uh, Maging Lano del Sur. So uh, we have Staff Sergeant Bacchiao, Lieutenant Colonel Miondas. We have Private De La Rosa, Lieutenant Colonel So Siak. how many resource speakers do you have for every youth leadership uh, summit? It depends on the commanders. Uh, for, like for instance, in uh, uh, local terrorist groups where uh, uh, in Lanao, uh, it can range anywhere from 5 to 10. Is that the first, the one dated August? That's your first YSL? Uh, YLS. YLS. Uh, uh, for 2023, it, the, the first one was in May. Uh, it was in uh, Zamboanga del Sur province. 2023, the first one was May. 
Yes. Uh, and then? Then we have the second one is uh, 16 June 2023. This was in Lano del Sur, uh, the municipality of Bubong. And then the third? Uh, we have July 26 uh, for the 44th Infantry Battalion in Cabasalan, Sambuanga, Sibugay Province, Mr. Chair. The then fifth? we have August, uh, uh, July 29. Uh, in the Digkilaan National High School, Iligan City. Six. Uh, then on September 29, we have in uh, Barangay Pugan, Concepcion, Misamis Occidental. Then uh, December, tw uh, December 12, we had in uh, Barangay D1, Dipolog City, Sambuanga del Norte. And as I earlier mentioned, uh, another one in Sambuanga del Sur, this time in Domingag uh, Municipality, ma'am. So those are eight uh, that were conducted uh, in the various areas. In Mr. Our Chair, with the manifestation of Colonel Buran Singh, I respectfully move that we issue Sabina Duces Tecum to the head of the schools, are they schools? Uh, uh, no, ma'am. Uh, not all of them are schools. One is the Kalaan. Uh, so what are they if they are not schools? Uh, uh, like, for instance, uh, the first one last May was conducted in a barangay, uh, in a city, ma'am. So Mr. Chair, started. we are moving, I am moving for the issuance of Sapina Duces Tecum either to head of the school or barangay which became the recipient of the Youth Leadership Summit yes, conducted by Colonel Buran Singh. Yes, ma'am. Now let's go to... There's a motion by the by Honorable uh, Congressman Luistro to issue a subpoena duces tecum to the head of school or barangay Second, subject to the... Why? YLS. Youth Leadership Summit conducted by Colonel Moran Singh. Is there any second? second? Duly seconded by Honorable Flores. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is carried. May we request as well, Mr. Chair, that the documents in the possession of Colonel Moran Singh, which I believe pertains to the Youth Leadership Summit, be submitted to the committee? Uh, Mother, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, according to the Freedom of Information Act, uh, since uh, these are confidential, we can share it, but uh, if we follow the act, uh, the Philippine Army or the General Headquarters Armed Forces would like to ask a written uh, request from the committee, which is according to the Freedom of Information Act. The then we will provide. The is uh, requested to draft a uh, letter. Thank you, Mr. Chair. As requested by Colonel Boran Singh. Please continue, Congressman Luistro. Mr. Chair, I wish to direct the next question to Lieutenant Sangdaan. Lieutenant, Lieutenant. Kindly, kindly occupy one of the seats. Have you taken your oath, Lieutenant? Yes, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Lieutenant Sangdaan, I have here a certification which bears your signature, I suppose. This is about the 22 activities for the Youth Leadership Summit and 49 activities for the Information Education Campaign. This was held in the provinces of Ilocos Norte and the local sur as well as La Union. Do you confirm this certification? Yes, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. And the certification, similar to the one issued by Colonel Buran Singh, is addressed to, to whom it may concern, on the upper part and then on the lower part, for the commander. For the record, Lieutenant Colonel Sangdaan. Kanino yes. niyo po ba talaga ina-address itong certification? 
You can answer that. Welcome to the DepEd, ma'am. And can you be particular? Sino po sa DepEd? Ma'am, can I just give the background, ma'am? That was the instruction of my commander, and according to my commander, it was Major General Mempin who requested. Okay, you answered the question already. Yes, ma'am. And similar to the questions which I raised to Colonel Boransing, do you have also some documents with you which can provide details about the recipient of this 22 Youth Leadership Summit? Ma'am, right now, ma'am, I don't have the documents because I am no longer with the 5th Infantry Division, ma'am. I'm already reassigned to GHQ. But I assure you, ma'am, that there are documents. You can produce. Yes, ma'am. Okay. May I just state for the record, Mr. Chair, that Lieutenant Colonel Sangdaan committed, manifested his commitment to submit the document about the 22 activities for Youth Leadership Summit. Yes, ma'am. Uh, just like what Colonel Boran Singh have said a while ago, ma'am, I think uh, it's much better for the... Yes, Secretary. we will. Yes, we will, Lieutenant Colonel. Yes, what is important, the manifestation of Colonel, uh, Colonel Sangdahan um, for the committee to write a letter. Yun po ba yung gusto ninyo? Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. sir. Yes, sir. Yes, the yes, Comsec sir. is uh, requested to please, is directed to please um, write a letter requesting for the documents as uh, requested by uh, Congresswoman Luistro. Please. Please continue, Congresswoman Luistro. But at least, Lieutenant Colonel Sangdaan, can you name some of those 22 activities? Yung naaalala nyo lang po, because this is quite a lot, compared to the one which Colonel Bransing had. He had uh, only eight. You had 22. Um, um, uh, actually, this uh, YLS... Were conducted by the line units of the Fifth Infantry Division, sir. Ma'am, just like the Five Officers Brigade, the Fifth CMO Battalion, and other infantry battalions in the area, ma'am. As to the specific of which, ma'am, uh, hindi ko na ma remember, ma'am. You you mentioned which infantry division conducted this. 5th Infantry Division. Saan po ba kayo kasama? Sa 5th po ba? 5th Infantry Division, ma'am. As a staff of the 5th Infantry Division, ma'am. As, as one of the staff of the 5th yes. Infantry yes. Division. But I suppose that since you were the one who certified, you're supposed to have a personal knowledge of what happened. Uh, we base it on, the, on our records, ma'am, on our tabulated you, records. Do you... Do you intend to tell us, Lieutenant Colonel, that you were not the one who actually conducted this Youth Leadership Summit? Yes, ma'am. The line units, ma'am, were the one who conducted those activities. If it is not you, then who? The different battalions, ma'am. For example, ma'am, uh, the 77th IB, the 5th CMO Battalion, the Eh, bakit po kayo ang nag-issue ng certification? We have the tabulated data, ma'am. Yes, I understand. But for one to be able to issue a certification, tapat alam nyo. Tapat may knowledge kayo. Yes, ma'am. Have... As a matter of fact, this is an inquiry in aid of legislation. You were sworn in before we started the hearing. And this will elevate the status of being a sworn certification already. Yes, ma'am. Eh, bakit po kayo nag ng certification kung wala kayong personal knowledge? Nag-certify kayo may 22 Youth Leadership Summit tapos hindi nyo po ito personally nalalaman. Is that what you wanted to say? We have personal knowledge, ma'am, because we have it in our data, ma'am, that the different line units... You are aware of the data only. Oh, sir, that are but different. not of the occurrence. Magkaiba po yun. Ganon din, ma'am, sa occurrence, eh, ma'am. You are that aware it, of the occurrence as well? Yes, ma'am, that it was really conducted. Okay, balikan po ulit natin yung question ko. Name some of the youth 
leadership summit that you conducted, if you are aware of the occurrence? Uh, just like in San Mariano, Isabela, ma'am, we have conducted the uh, YLS there. Barangay uh, po iyan? Municipal, ma'am. Municipal. Ang recipient yes, po natin, sino? Sino pong audience nyo doon? Sino uh, pong participants? The youth from the municipality of San Mariano. There were participants from the students in San Mariano and even out of school youth. Okay. Any yes, other? Any other YLS that you can recall? Uh, as reported by line units, ma'am, also in Baguio City. You are basing your testimony, Lieutenant Colonel, on the report. Tama po ba? Yes, That's what you said. Yes, ma'am. And this will only mean that you are not aware of the occurrence. If the statement that you're giving to us is based on the report and not on the personal knowledge of the occurrence, then you have no personal knowledge of how it happened. I'm aware, ma'am, that it You was are really aware of conducted. the data. You yes, are aware that it happened, but you were not personally there. Yes, yes. You did not participate. Yes, ma'am. We only provided uh, some speakers as requested by the concerned unit. How about this 22 that you mentioned in your certification? Ito ba na-attendan mo lahat? No, ma'am. Honestly, ma'am, no. Ilan out of 22 ang na-attendan mo, Lieutenant Colonel? I think only in San Mariano, ma'am. Only in San Mariano? Ma can I give a background on... Kawa, may I just make a manifestation? How can you validate an accomplishment report with a certification? The signatory has no personal knowledge of what happened. Lieutenant Colonel was able to attend only one out of 22 Youth Leadership Summit. And this is okay with GOA? I'm sorry, but I do not understand. Colonel Buran Singh, if I may call you again, yun pong walo, ilan ang na-attendan nyo doon? Colonel Buran Singh, Out of eight Youth Leadership Summit, ilan po yung na-attendan nyo? Colonel Buran Singh, you are recognized. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. I was only able to attend one. So that means that you have no personal knowledge as well I have of all the eight Youth Leadership Summit that happened? Uh, I have personal knowledge of this, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I may explain lang po uh, the structure of uh, our, my position is I'm the G7 of the infantry division. So the infantry division has three infantry brigades. Uh, they control uh, three, uh, one has four provinces, the other has uh, one province, and the other brigade has uh, one province. So I am in charge of supervising uh, I am the Civil Military Operations Officer, uh, Mr. Chair. So I closely monitor, we all closely monitor the program of the Youth Leadership Summit uh, to ensure that uh, it, uh, to ensure that it's, it is multi-stakeholder and it fits the objectives of the program. So we have personal knowledge. Uh, we can't go around in each barangay, but uh, they have, uh, since uh, we used uh, uh, budget from the uh, Philippine Army. We have after activity reports, uh, fund utilization reports, pictures and documentations. And uh, we have to ensure this because uh, we have a yearly inspection from higher headquarters. So we may not have been there, but uh, we have uh, personal knowledge. We are the program managers of this book. You mentioned a while ago, Colonel Buran Singh. Yes, you were ma using the fund of the Philippine Army. Uh, you confirm yes, that? Yes, uh, Mr. Are Chair. Are you sure? Yes, Mr. Chair. For the eight YLS 
Yes, uh, that were Chair. conducted. You used the fund of the Philippine Army. For our participants, we used our uh, the Philippine Army. The for the students, uh, they used the local government unit funds, uh, Mr. Chair. Okay, that is clear, Mr. Chair. I just wish to manifest the statement of Colonel Boran Singh that during the Youth Leadership Summit. For the military, they are using their military fund, and for the children or the youth, they are using the LGU fund. Uh, to, Mr. Chair, uh, if I may, please continue. Yes. Uh, they use uh, since uh, they use the some use the provincial local government funds, and the municipalities. Uh, some delegates also are using the uh, the. Uh, municipal LGU funds and for the participants from the other stakeholders from DepEd, from BIDEA, from the police, of course they use their uh, own uh, uh, funds. Uh, so it's really a multi-stakeholder. Uh, In other words, uh, Mr. Chair, a lot of offices and agencies are using their respective funds for intelligence in conducting the Youth Leadership Summit. This is your statement. Uh, Colonel Buran Singh. Um, I didn't say uh, uh, intelligence funds, ma'am. Uh, what I said was, uh, like for instance, for their billeting, for the hotel, they have to pay from their own agency funds. For their food, they have to pay. For. What is clear, there are different offices uh, involved. who shoulder this. their respective expenses Yes, Mr. for Chair. the purpose of Youth Leadership Summit. Yes, Tama? Mr. Chair, yes. In other words, it is not only the DepEd. Yes, Mr. Chair. Who spends its confidential fund? Uh, I'm not. I have no knowledge of what their source of funding is. But in as far as you are concerned, kanya kanyang gastos KKP. ang ibat ibang opisina. Uh, and for the children, the youth, you said it is being shouldered by the LGU. Tama? Yes, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Colonel. May we request Lieutenant Colonel Panopio? Colonel Panopio, you are recognized. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, Your Honor. Colonel, I have with me another certification bearing the signature of Magtanggol Panopio. Is this your signature? Yes, Your Honor, Mr. Chairman. On this certification, you certified 205 youth students from different schools, three youth leadership summits held in the provinces of Bulacan, Nueva Ecija, and Zambales. You confirm this? Yes, Mr. Chairman, Your Honor. And similar to my question to the to Colonel Buran Singh and the other Lieutenant Colonel, nakalagay po sa certification nyo to whom it may concern to sa taas, sa baba for the commander. Kanino po ba talaga naka-address itong certification nyo? This is addressed to DepEd, ma'am. May I explain for the commander, ma'am? And can you please kindly... Be particular. Who in DepEd? Ang dami po nila sa DepEd. Sino po sa DepEd ang kausap nyo when you submitted this certification? Uh, Yusek uh, Nolasco Mempin, ma'am. That's Yusek Mempin. Okay. And can you please substantiate as well the three youth leadership summit that you conducted in your province? Ikaw ba nakaparticipate dito? Your Honor, Mr. Chairman, hindi po kami nag-participate specifically because as a staff, we are just supervising and monitoring the activities of the Youth Leadership Summit. So similar to Colonel Buran Singh, you are just aware of the occurrence, but you were not part of the event. Yes, Your Honor, Mr. Chairman. And with respect to the expenditures for similar programs, would you confirm the statement of Colonel Buran Singh? Yes, na ang mga opisinang participants ay kanya-kanya ng gastos? Yes, Your Honor, Mr. Chairman. And with respect to the participating children and students thereat, 
Tama po ba yung sinabi ni Colonel Boransing, LGU, ang sumusuporta sa expenses nila? Yes, Your Honor, Mr. Chairman. Are you sure? Yes, Your Honor, Mr. Chairman. Can we recall Lieutenant Colonel Sangdaan? Yes, ma'am. Lieutenant Colonel, tanungin ko lang po yung pagdating sa expenditure. Do you confirm the statement of Colonel Boransing? Kanya-kanya ng gastos lahat ng opisina. Yes, ma'am. Oh, no, no. Yes, ma'am. And with respect to the children and the youth, it is the LGU the who LG... support expenses. Yes, ma'am, through their PAPS plan, ma'am. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I am done with uh, Lieutenant Colonel Panopio. I wish to proceed to Major Dome Dombrige. Major Dombrige. Major Dombriding, you are uh, recognized. Have you taken your oath, Major? Kapag take na po kayo na out. Okay po. Major, meron po kayo ditong ano, uh, submission prepared by you, certified by Lieutenant Colonel Panopio. This is about the Joint 7th Infantry Division DepEd Anti-Insurgency Campaign from January 1, 2023 to December 31, 2023. Do you confirm, Major, na ang sinertify niyo po dito ay 313 insurgency awareness and 9,000, no, and 166 Posted social media products. Doctor, po, uh, yes, ma'am, uh, Mr. Chair. Through uh, the that that uh, data was based on uh, the reports of our uh, line units. Ang kasama po dito, Brigada Escuela, Insurgency Awareness, Environmental Protection. Shared and posted social media products. And then you also have number of health-related activities. Ang dami po nito, Major. Tanong, saan po nang gagaling yung pondong ginagamit nyo for all of this? Ma'am, uh, most of that funds was uh, under the uh, POPs on the APB of our line units. Ano po yung PAPS? Please enlighten us. Projects, activities, and programs po. And can you please tell us which agency is this? Uh, in particular, ma'am, is the Philippine Army in collaborations with uh, our uh, partner stakeholders on the ground. In other words, similar to the statement of the three prior officers, yung mga activities nyo, ang gumagastos is the armed forces of the Philippines. Tama po ba? Yes, ma'am, Your Honor. And as far as your counterpart is concerned, tama po? Opo. At paano nyo po ba ginagawa itong anti-insurgency awareness? Ma'am, uh, Your Honor, in partnership with uh, the different uh, schools and uh, local government units, our uh, line units is uh, conducting uh, intensified uh, information awareness drives on uh, security uh, uh, security awareness, ma'am. How about the social media posts? Paano nyo po ba ginagawa to? Utilizing the social media platforms of our uh, infantry divisions and our line units, ma'am. We cross-post uh, social media, media products of uh, the uh, AFP units and uh, to include, ma'am, the uh, uh, other agency uh, social media products. Rough estimate lang po, Major. Sa tingin nyo po itong mga reported activities nyo na to, total of 9,712, the activities I mentioned earlier. If you're aware, mga magkano po ang nagastos na pondo ng AFP dito? 
But with that uh, figure, the number of uh, anti-insurgency flyers distributed, uh, a very minimal uh, expenses lang po dahil uh, uh, printed uh, flyers lang po ito dun sa, uh, with the band paper po. You're saying our minimal. Our You're saying minimal. Minimal expense. You said that? Yes, ma'am. And it will no way reach 15 million. Tama? Hindi po, ma'am. Hindi. Hindi po. No way. No way. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Chair, gusto ko pong balikan si General Mempin. General Mer Mempin, you are I'm recognized. about to wrap up, Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. General, kanina po sabi nyo, <coughs> hindi nyo alam yung confidential fund. Yeah, you still correct. confirm that? That's correct, uh, Your Honor, Mr. But Chair. I hope you understand that the certifications which I confirm from the AFP officers, <coughs> the four of them, pertains to the expenditure of 15 million taken from the confidential fund. And according to them, those certifications were required by you. Uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair, actually I was uh, asked by the officer of the secretary to ask for certification coming from these uh, uh, units. But uh, it is uh, clear uh, to them or even to me that uh, no funds are uh, involved, meaning no funds uh, released to these uh, units. What uh, the Office of the Secretary is wanted to know is the product or uh, the result of uh, the collaboration of various uh, stakeholders, including the PED, with regards to our uh, youth. So it is clear, ma'am, that uh, DepEd has not released any single centavo to the conduct of wireless to the uh, uh, units uh, mentioned, ma'am, Your Honor, and uh, Mr. Chair. If you are saying General Mempin, na walang ni-release na pondo ang DepEd dito po sa Youth Leadership Summits, saan po ginastos yung 15 million? Uh, that's your honor, Mr. Chair. That was uh, I was not uh, aware of it because uh, my the task given to me is just to coordinate. Because uh, to be candid about it, the commanders of uh, Colonel Boran Singh, uh, Colonel Panopio, and uh, Lieutenant Colonel Sangdaan are my former uh, colleagues or classmates in the uh, Philippine Military Academy. Mr. Chair, I wish to ask the COA, Attorney Camora, tama ba ang understanding ko? Sa AOM, may disallowance na 75 million. Out of 75 million, you are asking for supporting documents of the 15 million which were paid as rewards to informers. Attorney Camora, you are recognized. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. And in response to that supporting documents, the DepEd submitted these certifications about the Youth Leadership Summit. Tama ba? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. In other words, these certifications submitted by the AFP officers are being used as justification for the 15 million utilization paid as reward to informers. Tama po ba? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. General Mempin, your statement is completely contradictory to the stand and position of COA. Uh, your Honor, Mr. Chair, as uh, I uh, previously mentioned, the only task given to me is to coordinate to my uh, colleagues in the uh, active service of the uh, Philippine Army to have a uh, report on the conduct of uh, Youth Leadership Summit. But uh, as to the utilization or disbursement of uh, 15 million uh, payment to informers, I was not made aware of it. And uh, I have no knowledge that uh, uh, the, this uh, certification is for the payment of informers. 
Uh, Your Honor and uh, Mr. Chair. General Mimpin, I understand we also have Major General Bahao. You have a letter here, General Bahao. This is about the nine youth leadership summits. Kanino nyo po ito in address? Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, Mr. Chair. May I be recognized? Major General Bahao, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Ma'am, I addressed the letter to Yusek Nolasco Mempin, updating him of the YLS conducted in my division then. And uh, similar to the questions that were propounded to the three other AFP officers, kapag huba nag-YLS kayo, sinong gumagastos? Ma'am, uh, sarisariling agency po na nagpa-participate dito ang gumagastos. Sa amin po, more on facilitation and the security, kami po ang gumagastos sa sarili naming mga tropa. And with respect to the children and the youth who are the participants, do you confirm what they said already? LGU ang gumagastos? Yes, ma'am. At kanina po sinabi din ni General Memfin, balikan ko si General Memfin, Sabi niyo po, General, wala talagang gastos ang DepEd dito? Uh, to be clear, because uh, as uh, I was asked if uh, the confidential uh, funds issues for the conduct of uh, YLS, so it's clear that uh, no funds is uh, downloaded or given to the Philippine Army for the use of uh, uh, the conduct of uh, wireless, but uh, if uh, uh, confidential pan is uh, given General, to informers that, that of... That is uh, tantamount to saying na walang gastos ang DepEd sa inyo. When you said that they did not or DepEd did not download any fund to the military, that's, tama? That's correct, uh, so, Your Honor. So what you wanted to say, walang ginastos ang DepEd sa taga-military when it comes to the Youth Leadership Summit. Do you confirm that? That's, uh, I confirm, that's correct, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I am very much surprised, but let me wrap up and make this manifestation before I yield to the other members of the committee. While, while we believe that these certifications were submitted to justify the 15 million that were allegedly paid to, as reward to informers, now all the officers from the AFP, that includes General Memfin, the USEC for administration, are stating that the DepEd did not utilize any of its confidential fund in support of the Youth Leadership Summit. These statements, Mr. Chair, are completely contradictory to what DepEd has made the COA believe in the submission of all these certifications. Mr. Chair, to proceed, let us all be reminded Ito pong confidential fund na ito, pera ng taong bayan. We all of us are accountable to the Filipino citizens. Public office is a public trust. We should be accountable to the people at all times. And I do not understand why these people who are supposed to explain the 15 million is totally unaware of the same because they are saying that they never use the DepEd fund and what they use is the fund of the AFP. While we understand, Mr. Chair, that confidential fund by its nature is not encouraged to be scrutinized, there is nothing under the law that prohibits the same as well. There are important observations, Mr. Chair. Number one, among all civilian agencies, DepEd is one of the very few with confidential fund. Two, DepEd had this confidential fund only in 2023 and never in prior time. Three, I hope we can show also that while the DND, which has a mandate to address the national security, has 37 million 
confidential fund only. The Department of National Defense has 37 million. The DepEd, which mandate does not include national security, has 150 million confidential fund. Mr. Chair, to continue, while the police, the AFP officers already denied this YSL, YLS, having been supported by DepEd, 15.54 million po ang amount that the DepEd is trying to justify in making use of the certifications that were submitted by the AFP. Number five, Mr. Chair, prior to 2016, pag ang pinag-usapan po natin ay Youth Leadership Summit, it is the AFP who leads and they just coordinate with DepEd. But on the report that was given by COA, it seems to appear that the one leading the Youth Leadership Summit is the DepEd in coordination with AFP. Paligtad po ito. Number six, Mr. Chair, I do not want to preempt any conclusion. However, Mr. Chair, General Mempin spent 2017 to 2023 of his AFP career in the Vau City and the Vau region. During this time, the former president is the president and our vice president is the mayor. During those times, Mr. Chair, the Vau City, while it is authorized to have and to utilize confidential fund, I believe has one of the highest confidential fund among the LGUs in the entire country. I hope the Secretary can produce the data. I wish to ask Mr. Chair, ito bang lahat ng ito ay coincidences? Given this observation, let us all be reminded that the leeway that is being given to confidential fund is to be able to address a very important concern and that is national security of the country. No more, no less. The procurement and the liquidation were made liberal in recognition of the significance of the purpose of the confidential fund. However, Mr. Chair, if there are glaring indications of irregularity already, as those that we have mentioned, plus the admission of the AFP, is it not that COA should address its mandate of making sure that all receipts and all expenditures are duly accounted for the Filipino people? Question number one. Since when has irregularity in confidential fund been happening? Two, what has COA done so far with respect to its accounting rules in order to address the irregularity? And three, will COA simply brush aside these irregularities, especially with the admission of the AFP that they were the one who spent for the 15 million Youth Leadership Summit and not the Department of Education. Let us remember, regardless of which office in the government we belong, public trust always carries accountability. To tone down the mood of our investigation, at para mas maintindihan po ako ng mga tao, mayroon hong prominent na line sa pelikulang Star Wars, ang sabi, comes with great power, is great responsibility. If you translate this to constitutional language, let us all be reminded, public office is a public trust. 
the trust that is given to us by the people carries with it due accountability. Thank you, Mr. Chair.